This one is about how to receive the fire for revival. Revival comes to be as a result of the presence of the power of God upon an individual, upon a group of people. How do I prepare or position myself to receive this power, to receive this fire? First of all, what is revival? It talks about bringing back something into its original form or stage. Revival is like restoration. But when we talk about restoration, something was lost and then you are bringing it back from where it was stolen to. But in terms of revival, yeah, the uh, body bearing the features that we're talking about is still here, but is no longer operating in its original active form. So we want to re revitalize it so that it becomes as strong. And in this case, we're talking about your personal relationship with God. So remember that when you first gave your life to Jesus, if you ever did at all, there was the zeal in you, the desire, deep desire in you to have more of Christ in you. There was that kind of sober presence of God, you know, overshadowing you. There was that kind of feeling and fear for God. Every word of God made meaning. When they say the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, you feared God. You prayed voraciously and you sought for the power of God. When you heard about the Holy Spirit, you wanted to be filled. You felt his presence and you could be moving and the power of the Holy Spirit in you can touch people, affect people, affect situations around your life. This was what it was like in the beginning. But now, what's happening to you? You no longer pray the way you used to do. You are no longer excited about being in church or doing the things of God the way you used to do. In fact, serving God as a matter of dedication now has become number two thing in your life or number three or number yes. four. You become the judge. You judge everybody in the church. Everybody's wrong. You are correct. And you feel like you're not even going to be part of them again. You start thinking of withdrawing from the church. Yeah. Even when God is there. Even when God is still God doing what he does. Remaining who he had been in the church before you joined or the group before you joined. You discover that your eyes become so carnal that you can even query anybody. You can even talk about God. You can blaspheme because revival is gone. You are not afraid to make mention of sacred things in a common place. You can talk about a man of God. You can talk about the Holy Spirit. You can talk about the Lord Jesus. You can even question things that you are not supposed to question, that you know nothing about. Everybody stops coming to pray like they used to do. You two stop coming to pray. Uh, you don't even have any personal motivation that makes you feel like you should be up and doing in the house of God. You should be the one praying. Uh, even in your personal prayer places, uh, places that you go to have a personal quiet time with God, you, all, you cut off from all of these things. The fact remains that the fire is out. The power is no longer there. You have been outrun by the devil. That's why you are now a normal person. So these are all signs because the fear of God is no longer in you. So revival now goes. So how do we prepare to receive the fire for revival? Which talks about the restoration of the fire. When the fire goes and we restore it, it's called yeah. revival. Like when someone was sleeping in the temple, the Bible said before the light, the lamp in the house of God will go down. When it laid to sleep, then God called. So when the lamp of God goes out in your life, the reviver, that is the fire, is gone. And nobody can feel your presence. You be just become a normal person in the society or in the community or in the church like any other person. But if you are going to be the person to bring back the glory, to bring down the power of God, to bring down his presence, we are talking about revival here. So I want to guide you through some of the steps. Number one is genuine repentance. Yeah. Apostle Paul said the letter that I wrote to you will cause you to re repent and you will not have to repent again. You were born again once. You started doing everything that being born again doesn't represent. You backslided. Now that you are coming back, repent. Tell yourself what to refrain from, what to stop doing and stop doing those things. Number two, pursue Christian maturity. When we talk about pursuing Christian maturity, we're talking about you consciously thinking and pursuing, reaching for to conducts that are godly. When you, you can be the owner of your thought life. Maturity entails that as a Christian person in marriage, marriage is not for boys, it's not for girls. You are able to iron out your issues, dialogue over your issues quietly without even your neighbors having to come to the view of the fact that you have a quarrel or a query 
in your whole draw from this kind of life you are not part of them the moment god notices that you now consciously stay away from people like this when they come close to you you run away from them god says he will release his fire upon you number three true worship this entails that you're conscious about something i'm still that person i used to be i need to be god conscious here are you getting me you are wherever you are conscious of God. Your spirit is always finding a way of interacting with God. Even when you are discussing with people around, you are finding a way of interacting with God. That way you don't wander away from the presence of God. So you always maintain that kind of tact with the spirit of God. You always want to have the witness within you that the spirit of God is in you and lives in you. You don't busy yourself about many things true worship let your heart be opened let your heart be pure when you come into the house of god when you are outside the house of god hold god in high esteem hold cleanness in high esteem be very sure that you are always pure spiritualize your worship and your worship should cut across your singing your dancing your prayers your giving when God sees that your heart is pure, you are not there for Mr. Jakes or Mr. John. You are there for Jesus Christ. And you are worshiping for Jesus Christ. And your worship is genuine. God himself will decide to push into your life allowance of revival. When the power of God is lost in the church, this is how to restore it. Number four, concentrate on the goal, which is the revival that you are seeking for, concentrate on the goal. You'll be receiving news from here and there. Please, rumors kill revival. Don't pay attention to rumors if you want to grow revival. Dissociate yourself, disconnect, and then focus on the revival. Every day, revival. Number five, prayer. If you want to bring back the revival, revival, you should be somebody who is praying in the absence of revival. Top your prayer with fasting. And pray more than everybody else in that church. Or ministry you are not praying for your man of God he is not going to reward you but God who sees is going to reward you for your commitment in the place of prayer God is still looking for Deborah's to pray God is still looking for uh, Elijah's to pray to Number them. six be filled with joy in the absence of joy revival will never hit you learn to allow your joy to be a state of mind that is uncontaminated undisturbed let it be there in spite of all odds whether the situation calls for or the situation doesn't call for jesus christ is enough to be your joy giver number seven be honest be honest god knows you already so if you are asking what you're asking for you are ready to stand for it god knows if you are not going to stand for it god knows so when you pray and you are not honest God is not going to give you what you're asking for. So if you want revival to come, you have to be honest. It means that God will not give a kingdom asset into somebody's hands that is not going to be a great custodian of it. Revival is like a baby. It's a living thing. It can die. It can suffer from malnutrition. Only honest people can sustain revival next be stable in the absence of a stable mind revival will not come god will not give revival anywhere where there is no stability he will not so revival can be a product of stability in your mind you have to be stable what i mean is that some people are like wind toast here and there when jesus met peter he was simon giving the name peter meaning a stone he was simon meaning somebody who can who is baseless, unstable in a way. You get me? So, for revival to happen to Peter, that's for Peter to be endowed with the power of God and to work with his power, he needed a change of name, Peter, instead of Simon, which was the original name given to him by his father. For God to entrust you with revival at all, you have to be stable. There are people who say today, Oh Lord God, send a fire, they're fasting 10 days, 20 days, 40 days, even 2 years, 5 years. But in the next five years, after the first five years, will they still be there? That's the question. I've had a lot of people who followed me for 10 years. Some followed me for five years. Today, they are back on the street with the devil, eating with the devil, and the devil is stealing with them. 
real well. I wondered why when they prayed God never gave them the same grace that he gave to me. It was because they were not also committed. Yeah. They were not going to be dependable. God doesn't give a man or a woman an access to become a custodian of revival unless this person is going to be dependable. So you must pass the taste of dependability. God is going to pass you through all those tests to ensure that you are dependable <coughs> before he allows revival to come. The benefits of revival. Number one is joy-filled atmosphere. It happened in Samaria when Philip went there. Number two, a long life. People link, live long in the presence of revival. Number three, financial blessing. People enjoy financial blessings. Number four, uh, divine health and supernatural healing. Number five, there is growth. Yeah, both yourself and the church. There is growth on every side. Number six, favor. And number seven, communion with God. God. You always hear God talk to you. He's not so lacking in your midst. Each time you gather to meet, you see his angels come or God comes in yeah. himself. Number eight, divine protection. Number nine, Apart from divine protection, he undertakes to fight for you. So he sends his angels to fight your battles. Number 10, divine access. I have thus far in the past uh, 22, 23 years of ministering the word of God with power and joy. Being a friend of God is the greatest privilege I've had in life. It's the sweetest thing that has happened to me. Watching God using me, watching God interacting with me, watching God serving as my hope. When everything is off beat, God is in beat with me. And I thank God for that. And I wish you this kind of uh, providence, this kind of access. It's the greatest thing that can happen to anybody. I know what would have been my story if God wasn't there, but it's always been there. And every major move to the next level that I've ever had had been as a result of his presence and his power. Yeah, it doesn't matter the territories you travel to. It doesn't matter how grievously wicked and evil the people you come into their company are. But when God is with you, your enemies will always fail. They will always lose in the battle. Revival is the option that the church needs today to be healthy and to be a place that is a community of joy-filled people. The most exciting place to be is the church that has got revival. One more point about revival that I will not close this talk without talking about is go out and win souls if you want God to ever send revival to your church and to your life. God bless you. Receive the power to enjoy and experience revival. In Jesus' matchless name, amen.